you doing? Justin here. Today we're checking out Back in Black by ACDC, probably one of the greatest rock masterpieces of all time. It's loads of fun to play this one, so let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. Oh, there we have it, what a killer riff this is. So, we're starting off with an E5 power chord. Open thicker string, second fret, second fret, both played with the first finger doing a little bar there. Okay, after we've played the chord, we want to make sure that the rest of the fingers rest down on the strings lightly and get a mute. We also want to mute it with the uh, strumming hand as well. Make sure that it's nice and tight. Just one down pick then the mute goes on. Now we change to a D chord, a D5 chord actually, so if you start off with a regular D chord, lift off your second finger, we're not going to play the thinner string, we're just going to play the fourth string, third string, and second string, and we're going to do a down, up, down on those three strings. And then mute. Okay, this time it's just the strumming hand doing the mute. Okay, so E, D, then to an A. Okay, just open fifth string, first finger doing a little bar on the second fret of the fourth string and the third string. Again, down, up, down, just on those three strings. Three, four, one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, three, four, and again. One, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, three, four. You've got to make sure you get that rhythm right. Then we introduce, okay, it's a little E minor pentatonic riff, third fret of the thinner string with the third finger, then the open E string, third fret on the second string, then the open string, then second finger goes down, second fret of the third string, supported by the first finger, does a tone bend, a release, and then a flick off. Okay, so it goes down, it's playing a tone bend, release it, and then flick it off to the open E string, uh, open G string, and that's where, as that's kind of going off, we're forming the chord for the E again. So in this instance now, mix that in with the rest, we've got one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, three, E and a four, E and a one. Two and a three, four and a one, two, three, E and a four, E and a. Okay, so it's starting after beat three. Three, E and a four, E and a. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, release, flick off. Okay, is the picking for that part. Now, even though there's a big gap there, you really want to be feeling that beat. So feeling the one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, three, E, and a four, E, and a. So make sure you feel that three, E, and a. It's coming just after beat three. Three is a strong beat in the bar. So ba, 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 da, 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 da. That's how you want to be feeling it. So uh, second time through, E, D, A. And now we've got this other little uh, interesting uh, trick. We're playing the uh, second fret of the fifth string with the first finger, then the fourth fret with the third finger on the thicker string, then we go back to the first note, then we play the fifth fret of the thicker string, still with the third finger, back to the first note again, the second fret of the fifth string, then third fingers go to the sixth fret, back to the first note again, and then finishing on the seventh, which is actually the same note. good little test of uh, jumping around the guitar neck there. The interesting part, I guess, is the rhythm. So we've got this. Two E and a, three E and a, four E and. One, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. One, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. One, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. Okay, again, you can listen to the record, but if you learn to count as well, it really helps. I'm using a down pick for all of the notes on the fifth string, and an up pick for all the others, by the way. 
And there's a little slide off that last part as well. Okay, so now let's look at the riffs that we need to play the chorus. Uh, interesting thing here again, we're not playing on beat one, which is a little bit odd. I think it throws a lot of people off. So uh, let's go through the chords first of all and then focus a bit more on the rhythm. So we've got an A chord, A5 power chord, down to an E5 power chord, B5 power chord, back to A, and then back to B. Okay, it's the first bit I recommend that you practice is A, E, B, A, B. Same thing again. A, E, B, A, B. Okay? The second part is G, D, A. Then we put second finger down in the third fret of the thickest string for a little kind of blues bend, a quarter tone bend. And back to A again. G. Make sure you're playing the A, C, D, C, G, which is uh, like the four-fingered regular G, but lift off the first finger. Third fret, mute, open, open, third fret, third fret. G, D5, open power chord. So we don't want the thinner string ringing out. We don't need to put the second finger down. We want to make sure it's muted, that string. A5 power chord, hit again. Okay, now let's talk about the rhythm. So what we got here is this. I'm going to count it for you nice and slow now. So one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and and two E and three and a four and. It's actually the same rhythm. It just keeps repeating. So let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. So it's one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and. Okay, it's definitely worth getting used to just playing the rhythm with a muted hit. It takes the confusion out of the chords there if you're working on rhythm. Again, nice and slow. One and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and. Okay? If you really struggle, write it down. So write down one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and then write down that the A is coming on the and after one. So one and the E is coming on the E after two, two E and then B on beat three, the R it takes the A chord, so three E and R, and then the and after four is the B chord again. One and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and Okay? You've got to practice it and make sure you know that rhythm. Of course, you can do it just by listening to the original recording a lot and playing along, which works just as well as counting. It's up to you which one you prefer. So let me play it one time for you now, and I'm just going to put a little, like a muted hit down on beat one so you can see where the one is each time. Doesn't happen like that on the record, you would just leave that out, but one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so you can see there where the beat is, but on, when you play it for real, you don't want to be doing that. It's just... Okay, now I want to show you the uh, Malcolm's rhythm guitar part for the solo section. We're going to be doing the solo in a later lesson. I have already transcribed it, and it's a great solo, but I haven't nailed it enough to do the lesson yet. Although by the time you see this, maybe I've done it. Go and check on the website. So uh, the rhythm part under the solo is this. <laughs> Great rhythm guitar part. So we got E and R3, which is a D5 power chord, and then we drop first finger back, which is an A with a C sharp bass. Very common moving in ACDC. You have the D and then the A with a C sharp bass. 
happen to loads of different songs. Okay, so E, down, up, down on the D, down, up, down on the A with a C sharp bass. Now on the E, we've got Okay, just down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Let me count that through with you so you make sure you get the rhythm of it right. So it's one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, and three, and a four, and one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, and three, and a four, and... Little look at that last part, as I haven't done that already, so we've got one, two, and three, and a four, and one, two, and three, and a four, and one, two, and three, and four, and... So now I'm going to show you the bridge riff, which is one of my favourite little ACDC riffs. Really, really cool. It's this one. <laughs> so nice to play. So uh, we're starting off here with the third finger and the fifth fret of the fifth string. We slide it down one fret to the fourth fret, then we play the second fret and then the fourth fret. So first finger, third finger. Then second finger reaches over to play a curl on the third fret of the thicker string. So just a small bend. Then we're doing a thing like we did earlier. So first finger in the second fret of the fifth string, third finger slides up to the fifth fret, back, slides up to the sixth fret, back, up to the seventh fret. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. It's pretty complicated, easier just to listen to the record I reckon, but I'll do one more count real slow. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay, then it does exactly the same thing, just down a string for the A. And back. it goes back into the riffs for the chorus again. Now just one other little thing I want to point out, uh, I just noticed that uh, doing a bit of research before filming this lesson and I had the parts separated out again and Malcolm does the riff ever so slightly differently, it's very clever. He goes So instead of going he goes really really nice use of the open E string Such a cool riff, man. And what you get when you hear the, uh, the, the two combined together, you get that, because uh, Angus has played that, and Malcolm's played that, so you end up with this little kind of chord sound in the middle of the uh, parts. Really, really, really clever stuff. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun playing Back in Black. It really is one of rock's all-time great masterpieces. It's superb fun to play. Uh, the thing I think most people struggle with is the rhythm. Okay, it is a little bit tricky, but you can either learn to count it, which I do recommend that you learn to do anyway, but it's actually better to listen to the original recording and be playing along with stuff, because it's all about the rhythm, and rhythm isn't as mathematical as, you know, you might like to think. It, if, it's, if it was mathematically perfect, computers would be better at making music than humans. You know, there's something about the kind of 
the way we humanize the rhythms that makes it really cool. And, but it's still really important. It's quite a specific way. It's not randomly uh, changing the rhythm up, you know. So that's why listening to the original recordings and playing along is such a great idea. You know, it'll, it'll teach you those really cool inflections that make ACDC such a brilliant band. You know, it's, it's more about the rhythm that they have than the notes that they play. So learning to get that rhythm by playing along is a really, really sound idea. So uh, have fun with that. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.